I think Malaysia took this step mainly because of the step that Indonesia took um, a few weeks ago to to ban imports from uh, from four establishments. So I think it's really just following sort of their their neighbour, really in this case. Yeah, give us an idea of what lumpy skin disease actually is. Okay, so lumpy skin disease, it's caused by a virus. It's a pox virus, so it's in the same family as, as chicken pox or monkey pox. And it's really a disease that we saw in Africa. It was really described in Africa. It stayed in Africa for a long time. And then there was a, a major incursion into Europe in 2015. Then we saw in 2019, it moved into to Asia, into China and India and Bangladesh and Nepal. And then in 2020 and 21, it really swept through Southeast Asia and it ended up in Indonesia in 2022. So it's one of, this, one of these diseases that has come out of Africa and just apparently spread around a major, a major continental spread uh, during that period. Yeah. And what happens to the animals if they contract it? So um, it basically causes skin lesions. So it causes these sort of nodules or lumps. That's where the disease name comes from. They do sort of ulcerate after a while. Um, so all over the body, you get this sort of these disfiguring sort of lumps. It is a disease that affects a lot of animals. So when a herd becomes infected, you know, maybe 50% of the animals are affected, but it doesn't really kill many animals. It's more debilitating. It sort of, it causes production effects. The animals get weak. They lose um, condition. Milking cows will stop milking and so on. So it's a very economic disease. That's why countries don't really want to have it. Yeah, so they recover in the end, but it does take a hit in the meantime. Has there ever been any evidence to, to suggest Australia um, has this disease among livestock? Yeah, that's very interesting. So, no, there's, we've never seen the disease in Australia and we report to the World Organisation for Animal Health. So as far as that organisation is concerned at the moment, we're, we're free of the disease. It's never been identified. So it's a real surprise these uh, these recent events in the last month are um, quite unprecedented. We haven't really seen this sort of thing happen before. Yeah, interesting. Indonesia apparently did acknowledge that some animals may have passed through the Northern Territory carrying the disease. Um, is that possibly where this concern has started? Yeah, it needs a lot more investigation. I, I haven't seen the actual data. Some animals tested positive on arrival. Um, animals are tested when they're exported on arrival at the importing country. So in this case, Indonesia. So the issue becomes, when were those tests done? Were the tests reliable? When might those animals have been exposed to the disease? Traditionally, it's been sort of transmitted through insects. So, you know, biting insects, mosquitoes and uh, biting flies, ticks and so on. So that's quite intriguing. I mean, it has changed recently. There's been more contact, um, animal to animal contact. So it's a bit of a mystery if they tested positive when they arrive, when they might have actually been exposed. Could they have been exposed in port in Indonesia or on the trip over? Or as, you know, or it has to be ruled out that they weren't exposed on Australian soil. That's, yeah. that's the key issue. Well, and to that point, what now has to happen to try and determine what went, what went on and, and, and how to ensure that it hasn't entered Australia somehow? Yeah, well, there needs to be a thorough investigation. I'm sure that's happening at the moment. Both a sort of forensic investigation of the actual, what we call an outbreak. So putting together the pieces of information, evidence, to work out exactly when that exposure occurred. There's also, there would be more surveillance in, it's particularly Northern Australia, and that's our sort of at risk area, and that's where the cattle exports are coming from. We do test animals for a variety of exotic diseases. A lot of it's passive surveillance. So say cattle producers reporting disease, and this disease is very easy to identify, you know, very characteristic skin lesions. Mm. So it would be sort of going through those records and ensuring that system is correct, that we can actually demonstrate we are free. So it's sort of, it's putting a lot of layers of different data and evidence together, putting the case again before the, essentially the World Court, which is the World Organization for Animal Health, and saying or showing, demonstrating that we don't have the disease. Yeah. That's really, it's a scientific progress from, from now on. Yeah, it's interesting. And there's no, there's no, evidence it's never happened before that it spreads from animals to humans? 
No, as far as we know, it's not a it's not one of those diseases that can infect um, people. So there's no there's no issue of eating or consuming meat or milk or even touching these animals. It, it's not transmitted to humans. Interesting. Well, we'll wait and see what Malaysia and other countries do. Good to have you on. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.